All right, I'm going to continue with the GPT Disk Image Creator, this program here. We're going to go on to the second part, which is going to be actually making the, the GPT, the GUID, Globally Unique Identifier, Partition Table, Headers, and the Tables themselves. So last time we wrote the MBR, the Master Boot Record, at the first disk sector, LBA0, GPT header, the, for the primary at least, since GPT defines two, a primary and a secondary header, and primary and secondary tables for data redundancy and recovery purposes mostly. Those will be at the disk sector immediately following the MBR for the primary, and at the end of the disk, so LBA minus one, as it were, then the last sector of that disk will have the secondary GPT header, and right before that will be the secondary GPT table. So we'll be writing those um, on the Wikipedia page here. I just found it's, for me at least, it's a little easier to read these things sort of uh, vertically instead of horizontally, like the UEFI spec has it laid out. So if it didn't make as much sense up until now, this is what we're writing effectively for a disk image. We wrote the NBR last time. We'll be writing the primary and secondary headers as well as their tables this time. So the headers define where they're at in the disk image and they define a partition table filled with entries, and these entries describe the partitions on your actual disk. So in our case, we're going to be writing an EFI system partition, and we'll have an empty data partition as these two partitions here. And those will be defined by entries in an array, effectively, um, that is defined by the headers. In effect, the globally unique identifier partition table is defining a table of partitions defined by, or at least identified, by globally unique identifiers. Like that's the whole, it's it's all in the name really, but that's what we're gonna be doing. So I'll do that, and this stuff is defined within the spec, but I'll go back. We wrote the MBR last time. Let me just make this max, all right. Wrote the protective MBR last time, that's what we were doing. So we can go on and do the GUID partition table disk layout proper here. We'll have a couple structs. First one will be at LBA1, second one will be at the end of the disk, and they contain, among other things, an, a my LBA field that just defines where the GPT is itself in the disk or in the disk image, which the my LBA for the primary header should be LBA1, the alternate would be at the end of the disk, wherever that may be. And the alternate LBA for the secondary header would point to the primary header. The alternate LBA of the primary header would point to the secondary header. And that's one way that utilities that are reading these disk images that are working with a GPT formatted disk can do data redundancy. If they know one thing is corrupted, but they have the location of the other header and table, they can go to that area and you know copy the data back over or do things with it. Update the partitions if you need a new file system or something. But uh, I like the Wikipedia page, the vertical layout, more than this horizontal layout, but it kind of explains the same thing here. We had, we had the protective MBR, we have the partition table header, followed by a table of entries that define the partitions on the disk. They define starting and ending positions of partitions, and the first and last usable blocks on the disk being LBA values. What partitions can actually use outside of this GPT info? And then after all the partitions, you have the secondary header and the secondary table. So, okay, there's only one other thing in here, or a couple other things in here that I'm going to use as far as size is concerned. I just don't remember where they are at exactly. <laughs> okay, so right here under where it is defining the partition table headers, there's just a couple things to keep in mind. Um, after defining the first and last usable LBA values for the partitions in the disk, there is a minimum size needed for these partition tables themselves. Uh, if all the fields are zero, a minimum right here, a minimum of 16,384 bytes or 16 kilobytes must be reserved for the partition entry array. So these tables here need to be at minimum 16K large, and I'll just make them that minimum as well. Um, they'll, they'll have, you'll see in a second, but the standard size for these is going to be 128 or more. So 128 entries of 128 bytes at minimum <laughs> for a 16k table you can define 128 partitions which is a, a good amount at least it's a lot of data uh, the only other thing it goes through block sizes and things but the only other thing we're going to copy from these is going to be the only other info we'll take from this is going to be the alignment values you don't necessarily need to do this i've done gpt disks that are aligned on like one or two sector boundaries and not one megabyte but if you want to ignore optimal transfer length granularities, then you can just say, we're, gonna, we're going to align 
our partitions, not the tables themselves, but the partitions like the EFI system partition or data partition or what have you, we'll align those on one megabyte, one megabyte boundaries. So what this means is if we have an LBA size or a disk sector size of 512, 2048 of those are needed to equal one megabyte, 2048 times 512. So the positions of partitions are laid out within the partition entries and the partition entry arrays or tables, the GPT tables. So we'll need to make sure that we align where those are at. And when we write the partitions to the disk image, we'll need to start writing those at the alignment boundary. You don't have to do this, but it recommended it. And I figured disks in real life might work better if we align the partitions. So I'm going to be doing that. That's my reasoning. Uh, the GPT header is going to be a struct, similar to the master boot record and all that. It'll have a signature, which is going to be the literal string EFI space part. In little Indian, it's encoded as this constant. If you read it backwards in memory, you have EFI space P-A-R-T. Um, the revision number is going to be 1.0, but they do it like that in hex. We'll have a size of the header. Usually it's 92, so I'm going to be doing a 92-byte size. We'll have cyclic redundancy checking, a CRC32 value for the whole header itself, or really just 92 bytes, because that's how big we're saying. We'll also have a CRC32 for the partition entries. So we'll have to calculate a checksum for the tables and then fill out a CRC value. And then we'll calculate it after that for the whole header and fill out that CRC value. So that'll be fun. Um, it contains as well the position of itself and LBA on the disk. This should be one for the primary or the disk size and LBA is minus one for the secondary. The alternate LBA is the address of the other table. So the primary would define the secondary tables uh, the secondary headers LBA in this value. The secondary header would define the primaries, or one usually in this one. First usable is the location on the disk that partitions can start at, and that will usually be for 512 byte sectors. We need a 16K minimum. Um, 16K divided by 512 bytes is 32, so really you'll have the MBR, which is one sector, one LBA. The GPT primary header will be one LBA, and the table would be 32 LBAs. So the first usable would be 1 plus 1 plus 32 or 34. The last usable would be before the secondary table and header at the end of the disk. So for 512 byte LBAs or disk sectors, it would be the secondary header, which would be 1, and the table, which would be 32. So the last usable should be negative 33 or maybe negative 34 since it takes up 1 and then you have 33 more. So it might be a negative 34 for last usable and positive 34 for first usable. But we'll find out, we'll code it up in a bit. We have a GUID, a globally unique ID, 16 byte value for the disk itself that you can uniquely identify the disk. We'll have where the table for this header is in LBAs. So for the primary table, it should be at LBA two in this value. Secondary would be at disk size and LBAs minus 33 for 512 byte LBAs. We'll have the number of entries in each table. I'm gonna go with the minimum 128. The size of each entry, which at minimum is 128. 128 squared is 16K, so that'll work out. CRT for that, and then the rest of the block has to be zero. So that's something you have to keep in mind as well. Whatever the size of your LBA, if we go with 512 bytes, even though we only have 92 bytes in the header, you still need 420 extra bytes. Or well, 512 minus 92 is 420, right? Yeah, 420 zeros effectively at minimum. So we'll have that. And if you need to do your own data checking and stuff, you can check the, the signature, the header, the CRC, the other table CRC and things. So we'll be doing that. And then they have the arrays. So let's go ahead and lay out the headers first. If I don't just do what I just did. <laughs> press the button I should not have pressed. Was that 51? All right, there we go. I'll lay out the headers first. I'll lay out a struct for this in, uh, in our code here. Um, and I guess before I do that, actually, I had a couple to-do items. Um, if we use the image size and OBAs, which I will be using at least for the headers and things, I don't want to set that value within MBR, even though it's a, it's a global here, it will be set, but I don't want to change it unless I change it back. So I'm just going to have a local variable here for, we'll say, MBR image OBAs or something. That's fine. And then we can, this is a bad way of doing it. We can substitute image size OBAs with MBR image OBAs. 
do it there and we'll just do it there as well and that'll be all right okay and i also wanted to make out a function to pad out yes so i am using an oba size of 500 512 bytes but uefi and fat 32 file systems and things support larger than 512 byte sectors even though i don't have hardware that supports this or tools that support it like sg disk um, I can still attempt to support larger OBA sizes, so I'm going to do so where possible. Um, to do that, I'm going to say whenever we write out one LBA value, in this case the MBR is 512 bytes or whatever our LBA size is, if our actual size is larger, like 4096 bytes, I'm going to pad out the rest with zeros for an LBA. I'm going to make a little function to do that. We'll just say pad out uh, zeros to full LBA size. We'll say I'm going to do that. Let's say we have a void. Maybe write full LBA. LBA size, LBA value, write full LBA size. That's fine. That's descriptive enough, I think. And um, if I'm going to be passing this file pointer around, I can probably, I guess, still do that. So we'll write full LBA size of the file pointer, which is going to be image. Uh, I can write FP here, that's fine. Well, I'm calling it image. I'll just be consistent with that. So how do we do this? Well, I'm going to have basically just some data on the stack filled with zeros that we write multiple times. That'll be the size of a 512 byte sector, I suppose. So we'll say maybe like a zero sector or something but we'll make it 512 bytes and we'll say we have for some value here. Let's have I equal zero for a loop that we write multiple times. I is going to be less than our LBA size minus the size of our zero sector. So by default, that'll be 512 bytes. But if our LBA size is one of four supported values, 512, uh, 1024, 2048, or 4096, this will get the difference in those. If it's 512, this would be zero. The loop would not go. It would just immediately, you know, exit. So we won't write any extra data. If we add 1,024 bytes for our LBA, this would be 512. 2048, it would be 1536. 4096, it would be that minus 512. <laughs> 3592, whatever it is. So I don't want I to go that many values, but I do want it to go, we'll say, divided by... Uh, the size of zero sector. I could just put 512 here, effectively. That would be smaller. Maybe I'll do that, but uh, I'll just do that. So if we assume we have, let's say 2048, so we'll have 1536 bytes left to write, then this would be uh, 1024 divided by 512 would be two. Since we've already written one, one LBA, we want to write two more sort of 512 byte sectors to pad out to a full LBA size, assuming 2048 is the LBA size. That's why I'm doing that. Bad explanation, but that's what I'm saying. So I'm gonna write zero sector since arrays are pointers. Um, we'll write the size of zero sector. I can write one size of that, but I'll just, we'll write 500 total bytes at a time. That's fine. And I'll write that to the image, assuming that works. Hopefully it does. I could have error handling for that, but I'll just do that multiple times here. That's fine. And I'll do that whenever I'm writing an LBA size worth of data, like for a GPT header coming up. That was just a couple things I wanted to do uh, before I went on. So, okay. Wrote the MBR. Say we have something right. Protective MBR. We'll have other stuff down here. Write GPT headers and tables. Might as well. I'll have a similar setup for this. We'll just write the next section that we're gonna to write to the image. And if it fails, then we could not write it. So this I'm gonna say, I don't know, write GPTs. That kind of makes sense, the primary and secondary ones. So I'll say could not write GPT headers and tables for that file. Okay, else we'll go on. So we'll make a write GPT function. Copy out stuff here. Write GPT headers and tables, that's fine. 
I'll say primary and secondary. We'll have true, so we'll need to fill out, you know, these things. So I'll say fill out uh, GPT header. We'll say primary. And then we'll write it, and then we'll fill out the secondary, then we'll write it. Um, we'll just do this first. So I'm going to have another type diff for this stuff. Make it packed. And we'll call it uh, GPT header. We'll just call it that. Okay, so I'm going to fill this out with values that are going to be, you know, similar in size to what the UE5 spec has. All right, so I laid out the struct here that I'm going to use for the GPT, the primary and secondary GPT headers. Signature is going to be 8 bytes, revision, header, uh, reserved value, my, my OBA of this header, alternate OBA of the other header, first and last usable, GUID, which I do not have. I'm going to lay that out. As we uh, get GUID values, I'll probably be doing just a, a version 4 variant 2 <laughs> GUID, which I'll show in a bit from the RFC that it, it comes from, but it'll be a pseudo-randomly generated GUID value for version 4, variant 2 being for Microsoft, which is uh, the person who had, well, company who had a bunch of input on this spec, so they use Microsoft stuff, that's all right. OBA of the partition table, the number of entries, size of each one. CRC of that. We need a CRC for the header as well, which I forgot after header size. We'll do header CRC32. There we go. I knew I was missing something. And then reserve values. So this should be 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, 16 bytes for this, which would be 72, 80, 84, 88, 92 bytes. Okay, so we'll be good there. So let me go and fill this out, called it GPT header. So I'll name it primary GPT. And we'll just see what we have here. So the signature again is going to be EFI part. So EFI space part, this will be all right. Since we can, since I know it's a, it's a byte array of eight bytes, we can just initialize an array here of a character string. And that'll implicitly be, you know, eight separate characters in an array, so that's all right. We need 0001, 0000 for 1.0, version 1.0 there. Header size, we can do the header, the size of everything up until the reserved value. So that's going to be 92 bytes. That's the standard header size. Header CRC32 is going to be zero. We'll calculate that later. So we'll calculate later. Uh, reserved one is going to be zero. My OBA is going to be one. So LBA one is right after MBR. So the alternate LBA is going to be the image size and OBAs, which I don't remember if I got that down here. I did. Okay. So image size OBAs. Minus one it would be one before the end of the disk because the last sector on the disk is going to be where the secondary header is. So first usable LBA is going to be the MBR plus this GPT plus however big the partition is going to take up, which is going to be 32. I can hard code that. I probably shouldn't, but I'll hard code it right now. So that's that one. So MBR plus GPT plus... Um, primary GPT table. Last usable LBA is going to be the image size in LBAs minus the secondary header minus the secondary table. Minus probably another one because that'll be the last one before we get to these. So zero and one based indexing there in the brain, that's fun. <laughs> this will be second GPT header Table, yeah. Second GPT header plus table. That'll be all right. So disk GUID, I'm going to fill this out in a second. Sorry, I haven't done that right now. <laughs> I wanted to get this down first. I'll probably make a function for that, a, a constructor, if you will, for new pseudo-randomly generated one. We'll call it new GUID. It'll make a new one every time from 
random values for a version 4, UUID or GUID. But I'll do that in a bit. So partition table LBA is going to be where it starts. For the primary header, it's going to be at 2. So it'll be after MBR and GPT header. We'll do that. Number of entries is going to be 128. Um, I can get rid of these, you know, all these magic numbers in a bit, but this is what it'll be right now. Size of entry is going to be 128 bytes, and because we need a minimum of 16K, 128 squared is 16K, that's why these values are both 128. You can multiply them to get the size of the table that we're going to be writing. And partition table CRC, we're going to have B0. We'll calculate that later as well. After we fill out the partitions in the table, then we can get a CRC value, and then we can fill out these in the header. That'll be all right. Reserved, of course, is going to be zero as well for that. All right. So we have the primary GPT header, we want to write that to the disk, but we need some stuff we don't have, such as GUID and CRC values. So let's go ahead and lay those out, and then we can get the, uh, the table going and write the stuff to a disk image. So let me do this first. Make function to calculate CRC32 values. And make function to get a new version for variant 2 GUID, which that'll be this new GUID function. After we have that, we'll want to fill out primary table <laughs> partition entries. Okay, then I'm just laying out the logic here. After we have the entries and we call to get a GUID up here, then we'll need to fill out the CRCs. So fill out primary header CRC values. And then we'll have write, write primary header to file. Then we'll write the primary table to the file. And then I'll probably fill out a secondary header. It'll have some slight different values as far as where the OBAs for its partition entry are. And the alternate and my OBA values, those will be different. And with those being different, the CRC should be the same for the table, but the other one for the header will be different because the values will be also different. So I'll have a secondary GPT header. The secondary table is just a copy of the primary, so we don't have to do that again. We can just write um, that. So let's say we'll seek to the position where we would write the secondary table, so we can just write until the end there. Go to position of secondary table, and then we'll write it. Write secondary GPT table, and we'll write the secondary header. Just so I got all my logic straight here, that makes sense. We'll do these things. So we need functions for CRCs and GUIDs. I'll do GUID first because it's simpler, it's easier. And I'll lay out a, a type def for that stuff. We'll put it above here. I just called it capital GUID. I'll probably, um, let's make that lowercase actually. I like doing it like that. So, okay, I'll have a GUID value. Um, we might have to make it packed. I'm just making everything packed. <laughs> just so I'm assured that there's no extra padding here. All right, so what is a GUID? Like, how is it contained? How is it made? Globally Unique Identifier, also known as a UUID. Yeah, aka UUID. So what is this? This is an Appendix D. So let me go there, which is going to be at the end of this list. I don't want the links to be there. Probably have to go down a fair bit and have it load. <laughs> it's an Appendix A or D. It's also in the RFC, which I'll probably look at anyway. 
Oh, I thought it was up here. Yeah, Appendix A, actually, to... Oh, it's 16, is it? I can't read that text, man. <laughs> GUID and time formats, okay. And some visual bugs here, but this is time low, because originally this has gotten from just a timestamp value at the time of creation, we'll say. So that time low, time middle, time high inversion, so we have a, a, some bits of the time, and then the highest four bits are going to be a version value. Clock sequence high and reserved, the highest two to four bits of this value will be the variance that we're going to use. Clock sequence low, and then we have some six you know, special node IDs there. This is kind of a mixed Indian form for a variant two for Microsoft's variant. You can lay it out as a string like this, but the way they have the actual data layout, didn't mean to press that. Sometimes I hate the controls for this. Can you like go back to where I was? Is that allowed? There we go. And Vim keys to the rescue, okay. So the actual data like this, how it's laid out, is kind of mixed Indian. The first, the first few fields are in Little Indian. That's why it has, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. The first four bytes are Little Indian. And the next two bytes are Little Indian. Uh, the next two bytes after that are Little Indian. But then the clock sequence values and the node values, you can basically treat as a big byte array. They're going to be big Indian. So that's why it goes in order here as far as, like, visual looks. But if you want to think of it this way, the first four bytes are Little Indian, next two bytes are Little Indian, next two bytes are Little Indian, then Big Indian, and Big Indian. That's what we're going to be writing there. So I'll lay out that struct as well. All right, so here is our GUID. A time low, four bytes. Time mid, two bytes. Time high inversion, two bytes. Clock sequence high and reserved, one byte. Sequence low, one byte. And the node, six byte values. So here I'm just going to put notes here. Highest four bits are version number. And highest bits are variant number. Or is it I? Variant, yeah. We'll be doing variant two and version four. But there we go. The GUID for that is gonna be this GUID. All right, so I need a function probably for that stuff. I guess I'll put it where I have my other sort of helper functions up here, these small things. All the small things. So we'll say create a new version four variant two GUID. I'll just return a GUID from here. We'll take in nothing. Uh, change to that. All right, so we have a 16 byte value for this. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 plus six, 16 bytes. I'm going to make a 16-byte array that we're going to fill with random values for the version 4 GUID here. So I'll call it rand array 16. We'll do that. I'll make it 0, though it doesn't really matter. So where i equals 0, i less than size of rand array, i plus plus. I know I don't have the, the RAND and SRAND stuff going, but this is what I'm going to be doing for this. We'll fill out with random values here. Um, we'll get RAND. We'll mod it with some value. Since I'm doing bytes at a time, let's say um, a full byte range here. So that'd be UN8 max. So this will clamp it down from RAND max to UN8 max, which is going to be 255. So by default, this will be modulo 255, which is 0 to 254. If I want the full range there, then I'll probably have to add 1. So which is a little odd, but I think this will work. So that should be 256, I think, and it'll be 0 to 255, clamped to those values. If this is the wrong way to do it, let me know. I'm just, I think this will work, though, for our purposes. And we'll fill out GUID. We'll do this. So RAND, I think, needs standard live. I don't remember exactly. I know this will fail. Conflicting types have GUID void. Oh, I did write full LBA size. Yeah. You got to actually name the function, you know. <laughs> New GUID. All right. Expected equal on revision and things. Header size equal. That's true. All right, then we have unused variables and params, control reaches end and on void, okay. So ultimately we'll return results. Let's say we have a result GUID. 
and we'll fill values out here. And you don't have to do this separately, but for uh, for clarity purposes, I'll fill out the variant and the version fields separately here. So fill out version bits and variant bits. So if you're wondering where these things come from, because I haven't shown that, because I've been forgetting, sorry. <laughs> we have a UUID page on Wikipedia here it says more info about it if you're interested. It goes over better looking tables and things. So you can get these values from here as well. Um, but RFC 4122 defines UUIDs, universally unique identifiers, also known as globally unique identifiers for Microsoft. And the format, the variants we can choose from are zero through four. Well, these are the variants, actually not zero through four, but the first three bits define the variant. So we're not doing reserved. Uh, the one in this document that you'll see out in the wild most often is probably just the top bit, most significant bit set. I'm going to be doing Microsoft's because that's the version used by the UEFI specification. So the top two bits will be set to one. And the most significant bit two, zero based here, will be set off to zero. So in this case, we'll, we'll always have the top two bits set. So it'll be C or D, depending if this bit is also set, right? Most likely, because if you have another zero, then you'll have eight and four. If we're going like a four bit uh, hex nibble here, so eight and four at minimum, we'll have 12. If we have two other zeros in the top nibble, then we'll see 12, which is C, or we have the one bit set that isn't located here, which in which case it'll be 13 or D. So you'll always have a C or a D in the variant bits. And for the version, you'll always have a four for version four. So we'll always have two numbers that are gonna be the same, and no matter which randomly generated, in my case, UUID we're gonna make. We'll always have C or D for the variant bits, and we'll always have four for the version bits. So this just means pseudo randomly generated. All it means is use a good hashing algorithm effectively and not random S ran like I'm gonna be doing, but that's, that's all. Um, here's this laid out in a different version. You know, the first four bytes, next bytes, you know, like that. Okay, so this is probably the not, not the best way of doing this, but we'll lay out probably how U UEFI specified the sort of the bit order and stuff here. So Little Indian technically will be taking the first four bytes. What I probably could do is actually set, um, I could set the first four bytes at once with a UNT32 pointer. I can be dangerous and do that. Maybe I will, because this is going to be byte array anyway. We can try to get fancy. We can try to get um, the value at a 32-bit 32 32 pointer for RAND array. I don't know, zero, I guess. Zero, one, two, three. We'll get the address of that. We'll get four bytes and set it. Um, not a great way of doing this. If you didn't want to do this, you could also set the individual bytes here. So let's say we have four shifted left by 24 and then 16 and eight and zero. Um, to left by 16, ord with rand array two, shift left by eight, ord with Rand array one, and I meant to do zero through three, not one through four. Sorry about that. So I think that's how UEFI said that their bit layout is like. I think this should be equivalent for Little Indian. So I might just go with that if it works. It does not like it because I named it low with two things to be copy in there. Okay, so that's all right. And we have time mid, which is going to be the next two bytes, and then time high. Well, I'll just do that then. I'll just copy it then. It's going to be the two bytes at two. Zero and one will do two. Well, actually, no. Zero, one, two, three, we'll do it at four. Get the next two bytes there after the first four bytes. Time high inversion will be the next two bytes right now for six after four and five. Line this up a little bit better. And then we had clock sequence high, I don't remember. Help if I looked at it, yeah. Clock sequence high and reserve, then low, then node. Clock sequence high and reserved. Just lay this out here. Okay, so this will be the next byte, so we can just do one singular byte here and here. 
And that'll be going forward in order, because, yeah, these will be big Indian. The first four will be little Indian. So I think that'll be okay. Well, that would probably... No, yeah, this will be all right, because these will be swapped by doing little Indian, I think. Okay. I'm confused. I don't think it really matters, big versus little Indian, if you're doing random bite arrays <laughs> that we're messing with. I don't think that matters that much. But I don't know. Since we have an array here, we can just lay out the next six bytes. We'll say be four on a line. Yeah, four on a line won't be too bad. Uh, we'll have 13, we'll have 14, and 15. That doesn't seem right. This will be 6 and 7. Yeah, that didn't seem right. <laughs> 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We'll have 13, we'll have 14 and 15. And that'll be all we need. So we'll delete the other ones. Okay, so that'll be the next thing there. You can also do this for time low. I'm going to get rid of that. All right. So the version bits are going to be the top four bits of our time high inversion field. It's multiplexed with that value. So I'm going to lay them out just one at a time to be less efficient, but to make more sense than when you're reading it. So the top two bits for the version are going to be one, and then the next bit's going to be zero. So we can or with one, shift to the left by, however much we need to shift left by. Now, since the version is a 16-bit field, we'll need to shift left by 15 to get to the top bit there, because one is at bit position zero, shift left by 15, that should be correct. So if we can think of it like, we have a one here, and then, you know, other zeros. <laughs> If we had eight bits, but these will be the top eight bits. Then one shifted left, 14. And we'll be able to tell visually if we got this right. And then I'm going to and, since we have to set off the next bit, no matter what it is, zero shifted left by 13. Well, actually, no. And equal with not, one shifted left by 13. Which not one would be all ones except for that, so one, two, this one will be off. So setting these two bits, this one off. Actually, the ver these are the variant bits, I'm sorry. These are the variant bits. Version needs to be version four. I'm doing all this completely wrong, I apologize. I'm confusing myself, zero, one, zero, zero. These will be zero, one, zero, zero. Oh, that's all right. So we need to set that off. So it's a zero. And then we'll or it and have a one. And then we'll set the next one off. So I was actually, I was, I was pretty much right there. Only one thing was off. And this would be one and zero. All right, so we're setting zero, one, zero, and zero for version four. We set a four. We could also just probably do this. We could or it with four. What we could do is, I don't need the dot here anymore, actually. I need result, actually, to make sure that's right. But we, what we could do is have this like equal to itself. This is just some different way of doing that. Shifted left by uh, 12 there, 12, 13, 14, 15. We'd or it with four, and then we'd like shift it back over, but I'm not gonna do that. Cause I would probably mess that up more than I'm already messing up. <laughs> but that's all right. So what is the variant going to? Clock sequence high and reserved. If I can do that, there we go. And I wanna set this to 110. Let me just make sure again. Our variance can be one one zero, yeah. We'll or equal with one, shift left by eight, because clock sequence high and reserved is going to be a one byte value, not a two byte value. Shift to left by seven rather. One. 
So we'll have one, we'll have one, and we'll have zero. I think these bits are right, but I'll be able to tell visually after we print them out or use SG disk whether it's right. We'll be able to tell instantly <laughs> whether it's going to be right or not. Zero. Zero. Okay, so one, one, oh. All right. Yep, this will be four, zero, one, zero, zero, and this will be one, one, zero. I think that'll be okay. And we'll see. So we're calling new GUID. That should give a GUID value there. Of course, we're not using, I mean, we are using RAND. It'll give me an error for that. It should. Am I using stand? Oh, I have standard live. Okay, so we do have RAND. Well, we'll need to seed the random value. So actually, let me include time because it's going to be deterministic right now and that's not going to be good. Let me use time and do that. We'll set the sizes. Seed random number generation. So I need srand of time null. We'll just do that. And that'll seed it. I think that's right. Yeah, I need parameters. And write GPT. Okay. All right, so we'll get a new GUID value. We don't have CRCs, but we do have a thing to get GUIDs, which we want to be able to test, but that's all right. We can make a thing to get CRC values. I can do that as well. So this will have something to write the values and also create a table. So create CRC32 table values. We'll have a function for this. So I'll call it create CRC32 table. Right now I'll say void. I'm going to copy code from the internet for this because I'm not smart enough to know what the constants are for CRC32 and to do the, the code on my own, but that's all right. Calculate CRC32 value for range of data. So we'll do these things here. All right, and that's gotten from another Wikipedia page, computation of cyclic redundancy checks. It has things that it goes through, uh, pseudocode implementations for different things, and C code down here to get the value, but we have the C code as well as code in C to generate the table. If we go to PNG um, here, this, this link here, if you go to that, portable network graphics, so w3.org's implementation, they have stuff for calculating CRC values. And I'm basically just gonna copy this stuff over. When we make the table, we're gonna generate 256 32-bit values using a special constant here for CRC32. I think there's more than one, but they're using that one. The first time we do it, the first time we get a CRC value, I'll keep like a static Boolean or something. And if it's not made, we'll make it. So we only compute it once and it doesn't take very long at all. So that's fine. It'll be near instant anyway. But then after the table's made, we go through however many bytes of data. I guess it gets a C value, which is started at all bits are set. It XORs that to turn off some bits according to the value in the buffer that we're calculating. The length of the buffer, the current byte of the buffer that we're calculating in CRC for, we're going to XOR that with our current running total value. We're going to get the lowest eight bits of that. That's going to be an offset, 0 to 255, in our table that we create. And we're XORing that with the next byte. I guess because we're using 8 bits at a time here, we're shifting right by 8. I don't really know. I don't know the math behind why this works, but I know it does work. And yeah, I'm just going to copy this, you know, these two functions over and yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> All right, so I got the functions sort of copied over here to make a table and calculate the CRC. Um, I'll change them a little bit. This is sort of how I did it verbatim, just copying over. But, you know, we don't need external definitions here if they're used internally, so I'm not really going to do that. But they did have ints for these and uints for the other, unfortunately. So that's what I'm using for that. Although k is only less than 8, that doesn't really matter. This can be a, a u and 8 effectively. That's fine. The c value is all right. I'll set it to 0 to start. So for all 256 values of the table, we're casting it, but that's what 
That's what the code here has. It casts it first, so I'm not going to argue with it. There might be a math reason for that. Um, if it's odd, then we're doing this, else it's even. Either way, we're going one bit at a time and XORing with that if needed and setting the value. So I have a static Boolean just to make the table. The first time we're calculating this, I'm using a void pointer and changing that here just in case we send something that isn't sort of one byte aligned, although we will need it to be one byte aligned, but we'll just get a separate thing there. Now the first time it makes it, it won't be made and we'll calculate this. Let me do this. And made table will be true, so we won't have to worry about that. We'll just make it once and then go on. And then for the whole table here, since n is only used here, I'm gonna do this again actually. And I'm limited to ints, which is unfortunate, but we're getting the same calculations here. I think that it had, although it had an extra one-liner function to send in all bits and then return it inverted. So I just say, hey, we're gonna start with this and then we'll return it and that should be equivalent in logic. So a little shorter than the code that they had, I think, but yeah, it's pretty small for CRCs. So that's not bad. But now that we have that, since I made the function to do that, we can fill out uh, the table entries and calculate CRC values. So table entries here will do. We need another type def for that actually, for those. We'll be making a struct up here. I can set it under the header probably. GPT partition entry. We'll just do this. We'll have GPT partition entry, I guess. Well, I mean, that's what it's going to be, so. A little verbose name, but that's all right. So we'll get this from the UEFI spec. And that's where the GUI idea is. Let me go back to chapter five. And we'll go to partition entry array. Here we go. So partitions will have their own unique ID value, their GUID for the partition. This will be unique for the type of the partition. And if we have stuff like swap in Linux or a basic data partition or an EFI system partition, that sort of thing, ext2, like file systems and stuff, that's gonna be in the partition. They all have their own unique GUID values that are kind of static. But in addition to that, you'll have a unique value for this partition itself inside of the GPT tables on this particular disk or disk image. So we have a sort of global static one that's used in industry for whatever partition we're doing. Or we can have a unique one that our, only our systems use. Um, but each partition will also have its own sort of unique thing to identify itself. So if you have two EFI system partitions, they both would have the same partition type, but the unique partition ID would be different, for example. Um, in addition to those identifiers, we have starting and ending LBA for this partition. These I'm going to make aligned according to one megabyte alignment recommended by UEFI. Uh, the attributes uh, will all be zero. I'm not really going to use any of the attributes. Um, we'll give it a name, a UCS2 or UTF-16 name. And the rest is going to be reserved up until the entry size. So this is 1632, 40, 48, which it has right here, 56 plus 72, 128. So the attributes, just to show, are down here. These are a couple examples. Uh, all zeros is gonna be an unused partition. If I system partition has its own static value that we're gonna use. Um, for attributes, I'm gonna say it's not required. If people want to delete it later, they can. I will probably want block IO if possible, so I'm gonna leave that unset. And we'll say it's not legacy bootable, so it will be unset as well. So all those are gonna be off. And if you want an example, they have their own thing to find here that I'll be kind of copying over. So we'll do that. Okay, so for this struct, for the partition entries, we'll have the GUIDs here, starting at ending LBAs, the attributes, and the name. The name is technically UCS2, defined by U defined by the UEFI spec in the, the data types section of chapter two, I think they say they're using UCS2. So UTF-16 is a direct replacement. It wholly subsumes UCS2, it's a superset. But since they use UCS2, we're limited to code points under the 16-bit limit, no surrogate pairs. And there's also, you know, the D000 to whatever range is for surrogate pairs, so I'm not gonna use that either. But really, if I just use ASCII here, it's gonna be all right. Um, the key point for UTF-16 and the reason I'm using C17 standard, or at least C11, is to get access to the char16t type. 
If you don't want to do that, if you want to do an older standard or you don't have access to a uchar.h that I'm going to add here to get access to that, as well as some string literals for UTF for UCS2, UTF16 string literals here with the lowercase u. Um, UTF32 would be uppercase. And there's also U8, I think. If that's not available, it will be in C23 for UTF-8, but just U by itself will be UTF-16. If you don't have access to this or you don't want to do that char 16 t type like that, then what you can do is not use uchar.h and you can type diff um, uint least 16t as char 16t. And for that, you'll still need standard int. You know, but, uh, but that'll be an equivalent type diff. It says we need at least this many bytes, but we'll only have 16 bytes in each of these values. So that's the reason that they're doing that. And then you wouldn't have access to the little u string literals, but you would have access to, I guess, casting it. In a char 16t pointer type, you could cast your string literals. And that would be okay. So if you want to do that, you can. I'm going to be trying to just keep things within the standard live to make my life a little easier. Maybe a little bit more bloated, but that's all right. Um, do I have any issues with that? Not so far. Okay, so we'll fill out our entries here. It should be 1632, 40, 48, 56, plus 36 times 2, 72. Yeah, 128. Okay. As I go down here, fill out the entries. So we'll have, forgot what I named it already, GPT partition entry. And uppercase P probably, yeah. So we'll have entries or partition array or something. I'll just call it GPT table. That seems reasonable. We have GPT header or yeah, primary GPT as well as the table for primary and secondary. Only the headers will change. The primary and secondary GPT headers will refer to the same table at two different locations on the disk. The headers will be different. The table will be the same because the partitions are gonna be the same on the disk. Um, but okay, so what we can do, if we want to be fancy, is fill out however many of these. We'll have to have it be static. We're going to have 128. We could use a number here, but that's not going to be a constant. So I guess if I want constants, I could lay those out. Let's say we have those over here. I'll say constants. Um, enums, constants and enums and stuff. I want to lay out some global const and things. So the reason nowadays I don't like doing defines because I like extra debug info. If I compile with like dash G or dash G3 or things, um, I like doing enums simply because they give me a type. So even a, a straight define is just text replacement from the preprocessor, right? But an enum has, in C17, <laughs> has an int type. I think in C23, we might actually be able to make string enums. I'm not sure yet, but That'll be fun. Right now, this is a signed int type, which isn't great in all situations, but it does give me a type, and you know the compiler will warn me about things because it'll know the type of the values. Um, so I'm just going to use this for like general constants that we're doing. So I'm going to say we have partition entry number of entries, maybe or size. Partition entry size will be 128 bytes. Number uh, and this will be GPT. This is a long name, but that's okay. Number of partition entries will also be 128. So we'll have a minimum size we need for the whole array. This is one entry. This will be the number of entries. I know we'll have a minimum size, which will be 16K, but that's not labeled anywhere. I might want to name that here. So I'll just say table size, which is going to be what this is. I'll just name it table. Table entry size, a number of table entries. So 16384. Minimum size per UEFI spec. I'm using 2.10, so we'll do that. Okay, we might lay other ones out later. Just so I have that save there and don't forget. So instead of 128, we can say number of GPT table entries. And we can have a couple things here. If we lay them out in brackets like this, braces like this, this will be one, two, and then the rest will be uh, implicitly defined, initialized to zero. We can have the first two 
partitions if we do this. So the first one I'm going to have be the EFI system partition. And we have table size. I guess I don't need that up right now. EFI system partition. Second one will have be a basic data or Microsoft basic data partition here. Actually, I'm going to put that back up. <laughs> I had that because I forgot what uh, the members were in the in the structs. So the partition type GUID for this is going to be a constant. I'll probably make a constant for that. So let's say we have system partition or ESP, EFI system partition, GUID. I'll have a constant for that in a bit. As well, the basic data, I'll have basic data GUID. Uh, unique GUID will be new GUID. Starting OVA, for this, the partition is going to be aligned on one meg boundaries. So let me add that as well. I'll have it be like alignment or something, alignment bytes. Um, I'll just say alignment and bytes. Alignment 1048576, that'll be one megabyte alignment value. And I'll have an alignment OVA as well. Let me put that at the bottom and, and main. Actually, let me, <laughs> moving around a little bit, sorry about that. I'm trying to think of what, what all I need, you know. So let's have an alignment OBA, I'll call it align OBA. These I probably should, they don't matter, but I can initialize these to zero as well, doesn't really matter. But alignment OBA. And that'll be the alignment size divided by our LBA size. So if it's 512 bytes, which it will be by default, yeah, 512, then that'll be one meg divided by 512, which is gonna be 2048. So I'm just setting that before we go through, so I have that available later. Okay. Let's go back so I have these in focus. So starting OBA, I will want an alignment OBA, and that is gonna be where the first partition starts. The second one will be at some multiple of this after the first one, but the first partition is gonna be at the first alignment value. And we only have a max of less than one meg for the MBR and the GPT info so far that's going to be on the disk. So it's okay to just use this directly. That's gonna be all right. Um, we can even have ESP and data LBA. Do I have those? LBAs will probably be the size in LBAs. This is for sizes, sizes in LBA. But I'm also gonna have some values that'll be the direct LBAs themselves, because it might make things easier. So it'll be close in name, which isn't great. I might change the name, I don't know yet. <laughs> so I'll say starting LBA value of yeah, starting OBA values or, or something. We'll have alignment OBA. The ESP OBA will be where the EFI system partition starts. The data LBA will be, will be where the data partition starts. So I'm going to set those here. ESP OBA is going to equal the alignment OBA, but in context, it might make more sense if we name it that. Data LBA is going to equal some other number. We need the size of the ESP. We have the ESP size already. So I might say, yeah, let's name this size in OBAs. That would make more sense. ESP and data size in OBAs. Otherwise, it's like really too close to this value. And this is nice. I'm going on a tangent here, sorry. <laughs> Since I said image size in OBAs, I'll keep them consistent. ESP and data size OBAs. Since I didn't use the values yet, that's fine. So ESP size and OBAs is going to be bytes to OBAs of ESP size. So that's simple enough. Data size will be similar. Bytes to OBAs of the data size. And the data OBA is going to be at the next aligned OBA after the ESP, which is going to be at, um, it's going to be at the ESP OBA plus the size and then if that's not aligned to a one meg boundary, I need to align it. So I need to do that as well. I'm trying to think of doing two different things at once and that's not, that's not very helpful. Let me fill out this more. <laughs> the starting OBA is going to be the ESP OBA, which is the alignment, that's all right. The ending will be at 
ESP LBA plus the size, so ESP uh, size LBAs. So if our EFI system partition in this example, well, for this thing, is going to be 33 megs. So it'll start at 1 meg, it'll go for 33 megs, so it will end at, you know, 34 megs approximately, minus 1 LBA, because zero-based indexing and stuff, but that'll be where it ends. Um, I'll go back to that in a second. I just want to see what else. Attributes. Attributes are going to be zero. And name, I'm going to have be EFI system. So it'll be the EFI system partition. That's fine. Uh, okay. I'll go back to here. So the basic data partition. I know I need to fill out the constants for the, the GUIDs and <laughs> the GUIDs. We'll have a new GUID for that. Starting LBA will be whatever our data LBA is. I'm going to calculate that in a moment. Our ending LBA is going to be data LBA plus data size and LBAs. Yeah. Attributes. I don't know why I keep doing control B there. I'm trying to do that. Attributes equals zero. And name will have be basic data. Okay, so those will be partitions in our partition array. So as you can see, all the partition entries really do is lay out where they're at on the disk and what type they're at. Well, what type they are. <laughs> what type is this partition and where is it on the disk? And if it's, you know, special attributes or anything in the name of it. So we have an entry of information about a given partition and the header sort of says where that is as well as info on the overall GPT system. So it's really not that much info. It's sort of almost the bare minimum you need to be able to find partition info on a disk. I think it's a decent specification. And it's not it's not that bad. But okay, I do need these, these values and I need to calculate some things. But the reason I haven't calculated the data OBA yet is because I don't know what alignment value we'll need. So actually what I'm going to do is make another helper function for that. Uh, let's just put this here first, get next aligned LBA value, just so I remember that. But I'm going to make another helper. It'll be smaller than the GUID, so I'll put it above here. I try to go small to large with my stuff here, if that makes sense. I put type defs because they aren't actual data, then I put like constants, and then I put variables, and then I put small functions, and then I put large functions. That's just the way I've been... Uh, sort of structuring things lately. I don't know if it makes it better, but that's what I'm doing. <laughs> so get next, highest, aligns, OBA value. I'll do that. Compared to input, I'll do after. After input OBA. So I'll have input for that. If I want to return an OBA, let's say we return you at 64T. And I'll put next aligned OBA. And what I'm going to give is um, an input OBA, or an input byte, but I figure if we're doing OBA values, we'll work within, we'll work within OBA values. Okay, so how would we do this? It probably can be a one-liner. We have, not a label, <laughs> we have an alignment OBA, right? So we have that, and we have an input OBA. Say we give, let me think of how to word this. If our alignment OBA right now is off one meg, right? And if we have 512 byte OBAs, then 1 meg divided by 512 is 2048 for a, a number of LBAs to align to a 1 megabyte value. So if we're given, and we're working with, say, 1000, we have something that's at LBA 1000, but we want to get the next aligned LBA value after that, we would need to get to 2048. And how do we get to there from 1000? We'd have to add 1048, right? Just the difference here. If we had... 2050, so like right after, if this if our LBA value is 2050, right after one megabyte, 1024 bytes after that, we would want to get to 40,000, yeah, 4096, right? We'd want to get to 4096 because that's the next value that is aligned on a 2048 OBA value that is above our current one. So that's what I'm trying to do here. So our, our given LBA, we'll probably have to add a certain amount and the amount we'll have to add is that value, I think modulo LBA, the alignment. No, sorry, not add, minus. We'll minus the modulus, and then we'll add 
the alignment back, right? So if we have a thousand as the input, we're gonna subtract a thousand to get zero, and then we're gonna add 2048 to result in 2048 being the next value for the alignment LBA. If we're above like 2048, for example, like 3000, we'll subtract 3000 modulo 2048, which should be, um, that's gonna be the difference, right? I can't remember this off the top of my head, apologies. <laughs> Uh, let's do 3000 modulo 2048, just for an example here. That is one, because I did divided by. I was like, what What am I doing here? I need to do mod, not, not divide, but percent. Percent. <laughs> 2048, 952. Yeah, the difference here in this case. So 952, and then we would add 2048, result in, uh, oh, I need to do subtract. Yeah, sorry. I'm going crazy right now. We need to subtract that value of modulus. So 3000 minus 952. Then we get 2048. So we get the sort of lower or closest aligned value below this number. And then we add the alignment value to get the next aligned value above this number. That's why we're doing that. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. I can't explain and not make mistakes because it's been like an hour and 20 minutes for me going straight talking. Should I take a break? Probably, but I'm just, I wanna go while my brain is still hot and working right now. So next aligned OBA. What am I gonna use for that? I'm gonna say our data partition is gonna be after our EFI system partition. And I want to align each partition on each one megabyte alignment value or the next megabyte aligned value, the next aligned OBA value and in OBAs instead of bytes, which would just be one megabyte. So I'll get the next aligned OBA from the end of the EFI system partition, which is going to be the size of the EFI system partition after where it starts, right? So ESP OBA plus ESP size and OBAs, this will be the OBA that the ESP ends on, but it might not end on a one megabyte boundary. I think it will because I'm making them both megabytes in size, but for the sake of argument, it might not end on the alignment value in bytes on an aligned value in bytes. So we want to get the next one after that, that we can guarantee it is aligned. So that's what I'm doing here. So that'll be where the data partition starts, that OBA value where it starts. Just all this stuff. <laughs> but that's all right. So I'm going to use that in the data partition, it'll start at that LBA and it'll go for that plus the size of the partition in LBAs and that's where it will end. And we'll be all right there. Um, yeah, we don't have those declared. Okay, let me do that. I'll have some constants that I set, constants and enums. Let's set these here. So I'll have a couple GUID values. So GUID, constant GUID, EFI GUID will equal something, and we'll have basic data. So the EFI GUID is in the UEFI spec, basic data is not. However, they are both at the GUID, they, they are both at the GUID partition table page in Wikipedia. If we go to partition type GUIDs, EFI system partition, that one's here. The basic data partition is here. So I'm just gonna copy those over so that we have them as constant values. All right, so I just laid out some constants for these here. Remember we have the four bytes, two bytes, two bytes, then one byte for clock sequence low and high, and then the six node byte values. So these are just constants. These will never change. They're defined by you know companies, by industry, to only be these things to associate them with the specific EFI system partition and the basic data partition. So I'll be using these. And then we have those defined there. What else am I messing up? ESP, GUID, did I call it EFI? Yeah. EFI system partition, I called ESP. Not initialize array of short unsigned. Um, yeah, since these name values are char 16 Ts, they're UCS2 or UTF16 in this case, values will need the little u, forgot about that. That's the whole point of me using C11 and up standards. Uh, unused variable GPT table, unused. Okay, so we're good there. So we laid out the partitions, we laid out the primary header. We had some extra tangents we had to go on, but that's okay to get the right data and stuff. Hopefully these are aligned all right. Primary header CRC values. 
So primary G GPT dot we'll have the partition table CRC32 first. So we'll calculate the, the partition CRC. And I called it calculate CRC32. We need a pointer to the partition. Since arrays are pointers, we can just put GPT table. And the length is going to be size of GPT table. It should be 16K since this is going to be sort of statically allocated there. So that'll be okay. And then we can get the header CRC value after this value is gotten. We'll have all the values in the 92 bytes of the header we want to do. So this will also be calculate CRC32 for, just in case my head's in the way, calculate CRC32 for the primary GPT itself. So we'll give it the a sort of this pointer, right? With an OOP sort of parlance there. So we get the primary header primary GPT and the size of that can be 92, or we can give it the value here, header size, if we wanna not hard code that. And that should hopefully get correct CRC values. Then we have all the data we need to fill out the primary header because we got the GUID. All the other things are filled out. CRCs, yeah, okay. I'll write that at this point, we will have only the MBR written. So we should be all right to just write directly to the input image. So I'll do that. And we'll say, if we can't write it, we'll return false, right? We'll do that. But I'm going to write the primary header. And I did put, yeah, the reserve value will be, so it will fill it out to 512 bytes by default. So I'll do that. Primary GPT, let's do one byte that many times to the image. And if it, I put if not at F right, let's do if it doesn't equal the size of the header that we're trying to write, then we'll return false. And then just in case we have a larger LBA size, we'll have, I don't remember what I called that. <laughs> My memory's not great. Short term memory's not great at the moment, going after like an hour and a half. Write full LBA size, we'll do that. And that's just the void, right? No, that we give that the image. Okay. All right, then we'll write the primary table. We, we will not have to pad out to a full LBA for the table since the table 16K and that's evenly divisible by 512, 1024, 2048, and 4096. 16384 evenly divides all those. So we will not have to pad out to, you know, up to 4K because it will already be a multiple of 4K, if that makes sense. But we can F write that as well. So that'll be after the primary header, primary, or I just called it GPT table, right? Yeah. We'll have size of GPT table. And if it's not the size of GPT table, then we're bad. All right, then we need to fill out the secondary header. So let's make GPT header just to have long variable names here, secondary GPT. I'm gonna equal the primary GPT so we can just copy most of those values, but we'll fill out the ones that need to be filled out here. So the header CRC32 is gonna be zero because we'll have to calculate that. Uh, unfortunately, we're in C, we don't have like a spread operator or anything, otherwise we could do that and fill out, you know, everything automatically. That's all right. Partition table CRC32, we'll calculate that, but we need to zero these out first. So, what all do we need that's different? We need my LBA, alternate LBA. These are gonna be the same. The GUID is gonna be the same. And this, the partition table LBA, those values will be different. All the others will be the same. So my, my LBA, alternate LBA, and partition table LBA. Just lay these out here first. Alternate, partition table. Okay, so its LBA is going to be the image size LBA is minus one. I could have a value set just for this actually, secondary GPT LBA, like the data LBAs and stuff, but I'll, I'll just do this, this is fine. It's only used in one place. Um, but that's one 
from the end of the disk, the alternate is going to be, we can just do primary GPT dot my OBA. It'll be at one, but we'll just do that because it'll point to the other one. And the primary will point to the secondary with this. Yep, that'll be all right. So we could even do this here, primary GPT dot alternate, because that's going to be equivalent. And the partition table here is going to be um, where the secondary GPT table is in accordance to the disk image. So the secondary GPT header is going to be the last sector in the disk image, and the table will be right before that going backwards. Just to remind myself, <laughs> just to remind myself, we're writing, we wrote the primary, we have to write the secondary. The secondary is at the end of the disk, before that is the table right before it. So that's what we're doing here. So image size OBA is minus one for the header, minus um, the size and OBAs, which I did, I just said 32, that's fine. So that's where the table is. Um, yeah, and the last usable is one before that, so that makes sense, right? The last usable LBA is one minus 32 minus one. This is one minus 32, because it's one after the last usable one. Okay. And then we want to go to that, so I'll F seek the image um, to whatever that position is, which would be seek set. So where's the position of that table? It is going to be where this is. So let's say secondary GPT partition table LBA, and that's an LBA, not bytes. So we have to convert that to byte values. So multiply by the size of LBAs to convert it to bytes, and then we'll set. And now that we're at that position, we can write the table, which will be the same thing here. It'll be the same table. And then we'll write the secondary header. I'll do that. Uh, and this will be secondary. Let's do S primary secondary G. All right. And fill that out to a full LBA. Okay, and then the full image size should be written according to whatever our image size in bytes is, and then we'll return. So it's not a long function. We just had to do some extra stuff here for CRCs and, and GUIDs and things. So, okay. So assuming that's all correct, we will have written this. Let's check and fix any errors. Don't have any errors. That's good. So let's remove any test image we have and do that and see what we got. Let's do it with human readable names there. 35 megs. That seems correct because our image size was 35 megs, because we have 33 plus one plus one for padding, which I could change the padding value and be more explicit now, but that's what we have there. And we should have a big enough disk for SGDIS to recognize it. So big O, let's look at the MBR data. And invalid, so that means we messed up some things. CRCs don't match. And that's true because I forgot to calculate the CRCs, but at least we can look at the MBR. And it is the right disk size. The disk ID is gonna be zero. Um, we're overlapping, so we need a different padding, actually, because we're overlapping. And we have EE there. Okay. I knew I forgot something. I always forget something. I need to fill out the CRC values. Let's do that. Uh, let's do this. Fill out secondary GPT header. Actually, the CRC is probably going to be the same. <laughs> as the primary because it's going to be over the table, but we'll just we'll do this anyway uh, Okay, secondary Again, let's just do primary replace it with secondary So the secondary CRC 32 is going to be for the GPT table and we'll calculate it for a secondary header. Yeah All right um, make clean probably removes. I need to change that. Let me add to remove any image files as well. Just do that. All right. Let's make sure that's there. SG disk dash O test image. Okay. So we don't have an issue. The CRCs match. We didn't get an error for that. So the CRC calcs is the calculations is good. They are good. We are overlapping. So I'm going to mess with the padding values here. 
just make sure we have stuff available and we don't have enough past one meg. So some extra padding is needed. How much extra padding is needed? Let's find out. We have two things aligned on one meg boundaries. So let's say maybe we can have up to one meg extra that we need to calculate for per partition. So let's say alignment times two would be two megs for each partition. And then we also need to add some value in LBAs times, let's say we have the MBR, we have the two GPT headers, which is three, and we have the GPT tables, which are gonna be 32 times two, which is 64, so that'd be 67. So this is the number in bytes. I think like the minimum amount we'd need for extra padding, something like that. So let's, um, let's do that. So it's not great, but that's what I'm gonna be doing. Uh, let's do, Extra padding for MBR, GPT, headers and tables, and uh, partition alignment to partitions. So let's see what that gives us. I'll print out info to the user later. I just want to, you know, want to get this working first. So I made it, I removed it, we'll make another one. Let's see how big that is. 36, so it added another meg. So, okay, two meg padding, I guess, instead of just one. Um, and there we go, it doesn't overlap the end of the disk anymore. We're good, we have enough extra padding there. Calculated it through math, not just a, a BS number. And okay, lo lowercase p in here should give info on the GPT stuff. So this is how big the image is. Our sector size is 512 bytes, we have a disk ID. Um, the reason I know that this is going to be correct is because the version is 4, so that's correct. The highest 4 bits are 4, and the highest 2 bits here are going to be set, as well as the least significant bit after that is going to not be set. So this will always be a C or a D, and this will always be a 4, and the rest can be whatever. It, it'll count it as random because we have a 4 for the version. Holds up to 128 entries, that's true. Main partition table is 32 and ends at 33, so 32 sectors. First usable one's right after that, 34. And last usable is the end of the disk, which is 95 minus um, 34, yep. Is then the next 33 or for the secondary table and headers. This all looks correct. They're aligned on 2048 sector boundaries where each sector is 500 total bytes, that's true. Total free space is two extra megs, okay. And we have our names, EFI system and data. We have the codes, if you've seen these using like parted or or, you know, however you've done, if you've installed like Arch or something, right, you, you've seen these codes for setting up file systems and things on partitions. That's kind of, you know, where those come from a little bit. Those are set in tables somewhere in, in Linux land. Um, this is correct. So the EFI system partition starts on our alignment. It goes for the full meg value. And the next one starts right after that and goes for its value. This is a little odd, right? It's It's around one megabyte. I might have a little extra that I don't need to have. So this should be 1024, not just 0.5. That's a little odd. So I might have to look at that, but as far as we can tell right this right here, right now, it kind of looks correct. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say we're good on the GPT stuff, writing the GPT tables and the headers. So sorry, it, it did take a lot longer <laughs> than the last video. Of course, there's a lot more to kind of do and go over. I'll try to edit it down a bit as much as I can within reason. And yeah, so hopefully this stuff is good. I'm just looking if I have any issues right here. I don't think I do. That's just what, uh, well, it just says it's 1,024 and a half kilobytes. I have an extra 500 total bytes somewhere is what I'm worried about, but I don't really care too much to be honest. Our enums are right, right? Yeah, 128, okay, eh, that's fine. It's fine. So I'd say that we wrote these things pretty much correctly, although I might, I might research on my own a little bit 
and debug to see why this is like an extra 512 bytes. But, you know, assuming that's all right, I don't really care. And we'll go on from here. <laughs> and next one, next video part of this, I don't know if I might split it up into two or three parts, depending, because it might be just as long as this video. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but the next part of this is going to be writing a FAT32 file system for the EFI system partition. Since we wrote where the partition is going to be on the disk and we wrote the headers and tables for things, we know this partition is going to be at this point, right? The alignment OBA, the ESP OBA. So we can seek to that partition on the disk by seeking to the ESP OBA in bytes. And we can write the EFI system partition at that point in the disk image. And it's going to be made from a FAT file system, a FAT32 file system. Uh, is what I'm going to be using. So we'll be working with that. We'll write, um, you know, the different sections of a FAT file system. I'll go over that. We'll go over the, the reserve sectors. We'll write those. We'll write the file allocation tables themselves and go over the cluster values and things. And we'll write in the data region after that, we'll write the data for um, a partition scheme that has, well, not a partition scheme. We'll write the data for the file system, which will have folders for root and an EFI folder under that, and a boot folder under that. So that's what I'll try to do on the next video, write a FAT32 system to have this at minimum. And then after that, maybe in the next video after this, I'll, I'll automatically add a file if we find boot x64.efi. If we find that file, I'll add it automatically to the EFI system partition under EFI boot, so that if we want to boot this disk image, it'll find that file and it'll boot up automatically. So it'll make a little bit faster iteration for testing EFI applications. That'll be where I'm going for next. After that, I might do um, different flags and things to set the sizes of LBAs, different values, set a virtual hard disk if you want to make a VHD file, that kind of stuff. So EFI system partition is up next. Thank you for watching. Greatly appreciate it. My voice is dying if you can't hear, so. <laughs> Um, I'll see you off. Hopefully you enjoyed. And yeah, cheers. I'm going to enjoy some, uh, some cerveza. So cheers.